tonight and we're looking forward to our service hopefully you had a wonderful afternoon a restful afternoon we're gonna have a video here in just a moment this gospel film project here glad to have brother john reynolds back with us this evening and looking forward to our time together i'm going to pray and as i pray i'd invite you to pray right where you're at and ask the lord to use our time together tonight uh, to be a blessing to encourage our heart uh, to ask us to walk with the lord day by day uh, this week that we would focus on him. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the day, God. We ask in these few moments this evening, Lord, those that have come to your house tonight, that all that's said and done here would bring you great honor and glory. And God, we pray that as we watch this gospel video, that we would understand uh, our need to be vessels that you could use us to move the gospel forward. Help us tonight in this service to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'll stand where you're at there and take a hymnal, uh, hymn number 404 there in your hymn book, hymn number 404, Heavenly Sunlight. I'll never forsake thee from the 
so much again for being here. If you have a bulletin there, we'll go over several things and move the service right along. And we're going to lay hands on this computer and projector here in a minute and cast the devil out of it uh, so we can watch our video here in just a moment. But if you have a bulletin there, I want to bring a couple things to your attention. We did honor several of our graduates this morning, and we say congratulations to them, to their families, and all the hard work that has went in there. John Reynolds is our guest all day today. Had a wonderful time today at lunch, a wonderful time at fellowship. And we are working on our Sunday school department. And so we've had children's church, we have a toddler class, a toddler church, we have a nursery. Uh, but we want you to do your very best to be involved in a Bible teaching Sunday school class here at Tabernacle Baptist Church. And I'm encouraging every person to be uh, attached to or involved in a Sunday school class. It will help your family, it will help your walk with the Lord, and we need you to participate in these Sunday school hours. It's a vital ministry of our church, it's a teaching ministry, and so many people work diligently every week to prepare a lesson, to put things together, 10 a.m. every Sunday. And I want to encourage you over these next several weeks, you're going to hear me talk about Sunday school a lot from the pulpit, and I want to encourage you to find your place, find a class for you to be involved in here in these upcoming days. Brother Doug? Well, Ryan, again, thank you for being here tonight. Just a couple of things coming up in the life of our church. Uh, of course, uh, uh, on the 5th, we'll have Brother Don McCann being here with us all day. And then after the evening service on the 5th, we will have our uh, next fellowship. It's going to be an ice cream fellowship. I am all about ice cream. Uh, so come on out. We'll have plenty of it, and we'll enjoy that. And then uh, our next senior luncheon will be at 11 a.m. on the 14th of June in the Fellowship Hall. I know there's a lot of talk going around there about, a, I think, a home run derby or something like that. I think Susie said she was going to win it hands down. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing who pulls out the prize on that one. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and at this time, we'll have our men come. And we'll take up our Sunday evening tithes and offerings. Of course, today was uh, graduation uh, Sunday or where we honored our graduates. So if you do know a graduate, just be sure and encourage them in the Lord. And this time, I know it's a scary time in their lives, so encourage them. Brother Jack, I'll ask you to ask the blessing on the offering tonight. Thank you, God, for all that you're doing here in heaven. Thank you for the growth, Lord. Thank you for the ministry. Just pray, God, that you'll take this offering, Lord, and help us to spread the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Folks, if you need a book, turn to page 57 and let's stand one more time. We're going to sing the first and last verses of Amazing Grace. There's no other word for grace but amazing.
very well. Brother John, I want you to come along and uh, we're going to try and get our video together. This afternoon it worked perfectly at 4 o'clock and then here this evening we're trying to get it together. He's going to do some introductions to the video and I'm going to try to get it uh, keyed up for us. Thank you. All right. You suppose they can listen to me and watch you do that, I guess, okay? All right. I'm glad you're here. You hear that a lot, but that's sincere. That's honest. It's not just something to say. We are glad you're here, and I'm glad you've come tonight. This is a little different mission outreach, and it's a little different presentation in a Sunday night service. The Gospel Film is a film that was developed in response to a question I asked Evangelist Caleb Garraway. And I said, Caleb, I would like, he's a young man, he, he's out of Washington, Iowa, a young evangelist doing a great job. He preaches much in the style of Billy Sunday. So that ought to tell you, if you know the name Billy Sunday, that ought to tell you a little bit about his energy in his preaching. But um, rather than send me a link to a website or something where I could listen to him preach a particular message, he did what he does because that's what he is. He's a guru with video editing. And he produced a film, 15 minutes long, which is a presentation of the gospel. And whenever I saw it, I said, it's a marvelous thing. I said, Caleb, we need to do something with that. Now, if you get to see it, you'll know it's not just a talking head. It's not just preaching. It is multimedia with uh, film clips, with uh, pictures with music, with graphics, with all those things that just make it, I had to say the word, but it is attractive and intriguing to keep people watching. And as they watch, there's no doubt the message that they get. Now, that's the gospel film. You're going to see that, Lord willing. And then there is the gospel film project. The project is something that together we have developed to get the message of gospel, the gospel, around the world through social media. Now there are 7.8 billion people in this world. In my ministry, I started preaching whenever I was 13 years old. And I've been preaching now for about 50 years. No, a little, a little longer than that. <laughs> but in my ministry, in many different areas and in many different arenas and many different aspects of ministry, I've been able to get my hand around Jerusalem and my mind wrapped around Jerusalem. Jesus told the disciples as he went away from the top of Mount Olives, ye shall be witnesses unto me. Now witnessing... Witnessing is giving an opportunity, giving an opportunity, first of all, to hear the gospel, and if you listen to the gospel, giving them an opportunity to trust Christ as Savior. In other words, saying, will you now trust Christ as your Savior? I was with a fellow one time. He said, I never, when I'm talking to people one by one, he said, I never ask them if they will trust Christ as their Savior. I said, when you're preaching in a church service, do you give an invitation? I, he said, oh, yeah. I said, well, then why don't you give an invitation when you tell one person about Jesus? I said, you just don't have a big enough crowd? Do you have to have a big crowd to do that? He said, I never thought of that. So he began giving an invitation one-on-one. -on -one. So it's given an opportunity to hear the gospel and an opportunity to trust Christ as our Savior. That's witnessing. That's what Jesus said is our responsibility. That's our assigned responsibility. We give opportunity. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Jerusalem, that's the area where there were, the immediate area. Judea, that was the surrounding area. I've been able somewhat to get my hand around Judea and reach out a little further beyond the local community where the church is located, but into the whole city or into the whole county. Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. Samaria was an uncomfortable zone for those people that he was assigning this task. And I found myself willing, 
and somehow, somewhat able to get out of my comfort zone and tell other people that are a little different than I about the gospel. But when it came to the uttermost part of the earth, I've never been able to get my mind wrapped around that. I can't think in terms of 7. billion people, 7.8 billion people. How do you do that? Now, you know, in my ministry, we've supported missionaries. <clears throat> I love supporting missionaries in all different parts of the world. But, you know, if the numbers are right, there may be of our kind of people, of our kind of people, missionaries that believe the Bible, preach salvation by grace through faith in the finished work of Christ. Emphasis on the local church, all those things that we believe and hold dear. Those missionaries that are like that in this world, I'm talking about husband and wife, teams, families, everything. There may be 50,000. Now 50,000 is a wonderful number, but it's nothing compared to 7.8 billion people. We're not scratching the surface. Now, some people have opinions about methods. I want you to understand that Rome, the nation of Rome, when they ruled the world, when Jesus was on earth, Rome built roads. They were builders. And one thing they built is they built roads. Paul traveled those roads to go from city to city to city to start churches, preach the gospel, start churches, win souls. Now, they did not build those roads for Paul to travel. You understand that, don't you? They built the roads but Paul used what they built to take the gospel, okay? Now, the printing press, when the printing press came along, it changed everything. And initially, the printing press did begin with the first thing printed on the printing press was a copy of the Word of God. Okay, that's a little different. But you and I both know today the printing presses don't primarily print the gospel. But we still print the gospel using printing presses. And that technology, we still use that. Though that's not why the people who print today magazines and newspapers and advertising and all that kind of stuff, uh, that's not their primary thing, but we use that technology. Whenever radio came along, everybody thought, oh, well, what is this radio, radio, you know, oh, that people listen. And they did not develop radio as a means of getting out the gospel. Yet every one of us, I dare say, have listened to a gospel preacher on the radio. What have we done? We have taken that technology that was developed basically by the world and used it as a means of getting out the gospel. Whenever television came along, the same thing. Same thing was true. Television was not developed as a means of getting out the gospel, and yet we use that to get out the gospel. This right here, amplification. Amplification was not developed with the idea of people being able to hear preachers better, but we use it. Now we come to a time of the Internet, and there's a lot of junk on the Internet. That's true. But there's a lot of junk being printed, and there's a lot of junk on the radio, and there's a lot of junk on television. But we use those technologies as a means of getting out the gospel. Why should we not use this that has the widest spread of any of that? Nothing has a wider spread today than the internet. Why should we not use that to get out the gospel? What the gospel film project is, is using the internet to get the gospel out to the nations of the world. Now, we do some things in the United States, but the basic thing we do in the United States is help churches. We print things like 
of this right here. Uh, let me see if I've got this. It looks bigger on here. It looks bigger on here. How many of you know what that is? Can you see it well enough to tell what it is? It's a QR code. In other words, if a person takes their smartphone and puts the camera, and generally they don't have to go to your camera, you just put your phone on that, something pops up. You don't take a picture of it, but something pops up with a square around it. You touch that square, and when you touch that, it goes immediately to this video. Are we going to watch it? We're going to watch it. Okay, this video you're going to see in just a little bit. It goes immediately to that video, which is a 15-minute presentation of the gospel. And I think he's tired of being there trying to make it work. Huh? Okay. Now, in order to get to the world, we have to have languages. You see a couple of languages here. But, uh, yeah, this is... This is the Arabic language, and we've gone into Middle Eastern countries. Afghanistan, uh, we have Farsi, which is the number one uh, language in Afghanistan. The film had a dramatic impact in Afghanistan when the pullout took place uh, earlier last year. Or was that this year? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, in, the, in a third world country like Afghanistan, a third world country, there are 1.4 million Facebook users. Isn't that amazing? They've all got that in their hand all over the world. Facebook has in this world of 7.8 billion people, they have 2.7 billion active Facebook users. That's an amazing thing. What we do is we buy advertising on Facebook as well as YouTube and Instagram, but nobody casts the net that Facebook casts. The only thing that stands between us and 2.7 billion people because Facebook has approved this film for advertising on Facebook. We are an advertiser with them. We have an advertising executive that works with us, that places the film wherever we want it placed on Facebook around the world. We've, been in thir we've had people saved in 30 different countries. And it's amazing some of the stories that take place that have happened. It's absolutely astounding. But we thank God for it. But we're not getting kicked off Facebook. At least not at this point in time. Because we have been approved. And we buy, we buy up to $9,000 worth of advertising a month on Facebook. And that's what Facebook is all, account, all about. And where that $9,000 comes from is churches, just like this church, taking us on for support as you would any other missionary. Now I want you to watch the film, and then I'm going to tell you about what has happened in the last year. after taking your final breath. Your soul will go into eternity. Are you ready for this? Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by my
It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. God loves you. You may not believe that he exists, but it doesn't change the fact that God is real. His love for you is real. And he longs for you to spend eternity with him in heaven. The Bible teaches us that the Lord is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But what is truth? We live in a time filled with so much uncertainty, so many lies, so many false religions. But Jesus says, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If ye continue in my word, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth is, all of us are lost without Jesus Christ. No matter how successful our lives might be or how religiously engaged we are, if Jesus Christ is not my personal Savior, if he's not your personal Savior, we will die and perish, separated from God. Genuinely ask yourself in your heart, if I were to die right now, where will I go? Heaven or hell? If you're not 100% sure that heaven will be your home, there is hope because God comforts us in 1 John 5.13. These things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. When it's your time to leave this world, you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven. That's why I believe the Lord has given you the opportunity to watch this gospel film. He wants to share his love with you, and he wants to show you the way of eternal salvation. The first thing we must understand is our sinful corruption. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We may consider ourselves to be pretty good compared to somebody else, but no one is perfect. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And the scripture hath concluded all under sin. No matter how hard we try, all of us fall short of the perfection and holiness of God. I'm a sinner, and you're a sinner. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 4, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Let's be honest with one another. We've all done bad things. We've all broken God's law. Whether it's telling a lie, being dishonest, stealing, cheating, taking the Lord's name in vain, thinking lustful thoughts, or being disobedient to our parents, just to name a few. Because of our sin, because we've broken God's law, there is a consequence. And it's a serious penalty. Just like a criminal must pay for his crime, a sinner must also pay for the debt of a sin. Secondly, we must accept the truth of our separated consequence. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Romans 5.12 teaches us that death has come by sin, and death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. To die in our sins without Jesus Christ is to spend an eternity in hell. This is sobering news, but God's word is clear. The fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Maybe you're thinking, how could a God of love do this? The truth is, he doesn't want to, but he has to. Hell is a place of horrific pain and torment that God originally created for Satan and the fallen angels a place where sin could be cast away from his sight for all of eternity. God never made hell for you and me. He made heaven for us. He says in John 14, 2, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. But no sin can be allowed into heaven. God is holy and perfect. Our own sins separate us from him. Our own sins send us to hell. I believe that God in his love wrote Revelation 21.8 to make us stop and see what would happen to us if we died in our sins. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. That's why he willingly sent his son Jesus. Jesus came for you. He came because he loves you.
Thirdly, we need to recognize our Savior's cross. The most famous Bible verse of all time is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ, the perfect Son of God, was born of a virgin. He was born to die and take away the sins of the world. He lived 33 and a half sinless years, teaching and preaching truth. He touched the sick and made the lame to walk again. Many believed on him and were healed of their incurable diseases. But he was hated by the Pharisees and betrayed. They mocked and ridiculed him. They falsely accused him and convinced Pontius Pilate that he was worthy of death. Jesus was whipped mercilessly with the cat of nine tails an instrument of torture that had bits of metal and stone woven into its leather strips. But he endured all of the suffering and agony because of his love for us. They made a crown of thorns and pressed it down into a skull. They cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! But this was all a part of God's loving plan of salvation. Jesus courageously went up Mount Calvary outside of Jerusalem and was nailed to an old rugged cross. Hereby perceived be the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. He willingly gave himself as a sacrifice and shed his blood to take our punishment and rescue us from hell. It was my sins and yours that nailed him to that tree. And I believe there was a specific moment as he hung there on the cross when he literally thought of you. He loved you, and he died for you. Three days later, he victoriously rose again from the grave, and now he offers salvation. The Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This, this is the good news. Through what Jesus did on the cross, God has a gift for you. It's eternal life with him in heaven. Of course, a gift is something that's freely given out of love. You can't work for it. You can't earn it. If you did, it, it wouldn't be a gift. Someone else pays the price and then offers it to you. But you have a choice to make, to receive it or reject it. The gift that God offers you is eternal life in heaven. Eternal life can't be bought or earned by being baptized, giving money away, or going to church. There's no amount of good deeds that you could do to outweigh your bad and get you into heaven. It's only through Jesus. He's paid the price. God's word plainly says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And Acts 4.12 proclaims, For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. It's only Jesus. And now, now we have a simple choice. God promises in Romans 10.13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, he stands in heaven with his arms open wide in love, waiting for you to come to him by faith and accept him as your personal Savior. According to the Bible, if you were to receive Jesus Christ and his gift of salvation that he offers you, where will you go when you die? The exciting answer is heaven. But if you were to reject Christ and never accept what he did for you on the cross, where will you spend eternity? The sobering answer is hell. Right now, right now you have a choice, a personal decision to make. Why not call upon the Lord and ask Him to save you? In this moment, I'm begging you, join with me in prayer. Of course, merely saying words will not save you, but sincerely calling out to Christ from your heart in a prayer of faith will. God is listening. Right now, would you bow your head and simply pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. 
I know I deserve the penalty for my sins. But I don't want to die and go to hell. I want to be with you in heaven. I believe you died on the cross and rose again for me. Please forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. I gladly receive your gift of eternal life. I trust in you alone to be my Savior. Thank you, God, for your love and for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, did you just trust in Jesus Christ to be your personal Savior? Praise God. The Bible plainly teaches that you can never lose your salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not maybe or might be, but shall be. God has given you the promise of eternal life. For the Christian, death is now simply a transition from this life into the next. And Jesus gives assurance to all those who trusted in him. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Your soul is safe in the almighty hands of Jesus Christ. If you prayed and trusted in him today, we would love to hear from you. Please contact us so we can rejoice with you. We'd be delighted to pray for you and help you with any questions that you may have as a Christian. God bless you. And please share this wonderful message of eternal salvation, of hope, with as many people as you possibly can. Let's bow our heads in prayer. I don't think it'd be right to have a thorough presentation of the gospel like this and not ask if here tonight someone would say, tonight I will receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. I don't know who you are or how you've come to be here, but is there one who would raise their hand tonight and say, right now, I trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. How many of you would raise your hand and say, I know somebody that needs to hear this message? Would you raise your hand? I know somebody needs to hear this message. Father, the world needs to hear the message. This is your commission, your command to us to get this message into all the world. Lord, give us a Bible-based, Holy Spirit-led creativity to get your word, your message of salvation to the millions and even billions who have never heard. In Jesus' name, I pray. Whenever a person, amen, whenever a person sees the ad on Facebook, touches the ad, that is the message they get. This brochure is information. It's a little bit about who we are, some of the endorsements from some people. Uh, it has some terms on here, impression, views. Some of you understand that if you're on Facebook, views, uh, reactions, shares, those are Facebook terminologies. Those are social media terminology. Impression means that the ad has come across this many people's social media page. Views means they've touched the ad and gone and watched at least some portion of the film. We are told by Facebook that basically on this film, they have to watch three minutes in order to count as a view. The big number on this, not the big, a big number, but an important number on this is shares. That means at this time, at the end of, Jan no, at the beginning of January of this year, 51,000 people have said, I want my friends to hear this message. 
Wow. It's like going down the street knocking on doors. You come to somebody's house, they come to the door. Knocking on the door is an impression. When they come to the door and listen to you, that's a view. Whenever they say to you, my sister and brother-in-law live down the street, would you go tell them what you've told me? Now, that's pretty big stuff right there. There's other people that I want to hear about the gospel. Whenever we have these printed, these information sheets, this one was done in January. It needs to be updated. We can't update them every week. We can't even update them every month. But when this was done in January, and January has been a key time in this, we've been doing this for a few months, but really with intensity for about a year. That's it, for about a year, okay? At the end of January, or the beginning of January, or in January, we had come across the Facebook page of 30 million, 30 million people. Of that 30 million, 13 million had viewed the film. 13 million views is a lot of views for anything, but for the gospel, it's a phenomenal amount. Now, since January... The Lord has done some marvelous things for us financially, which has enabled us to purchase more advertising. Now, at the end of April, the number was up to coming across the social media page of 55 million. As of the middle of May, it was 59 million. It just goes and goes and goes. At the end of April, there had been 32 million views of the film. Now, that's a phenomenal thing. Thousands are being saved. Whenever people respond to this, it's not easy to respond to, but when they respond to this, it comes back to us it's an amazing day in which we live. Facebook has an automatic translation. So if people in whatever language they watch it in, we have 55 languages. Whatever language they watch it in, their response comes back to us translated into English. It's not real good English, but we understand what they're saying. We take those responses I send them to mission boards and the mission boards send them to where they have missionaries to follow up on. Now we do another thing with them, like right now in Costa Rica, right now, today, and for two weeks now, we've been running ads in an area outside San Jose, Costa Rica, where a young man is starting a church. Whenever people respond to us from that area of Costa Rica, we turn around and send those contacts to that young man starting a church. We're running right now, this weekend also, in five areas of the Dominican Republic with the same idea. These are established churches, but they're trying to make further contacts. And those people in that area see the value of having their area exposed to the gospel. I mentioned Afghanistan earlier. In the Ukraine, in the Ukraine, with what's going on there, Ukraine's a pretty well-developed country. We've had 12 million views in the Ukraine, 12 million views of the gospel. Now, we did something else in the Ukraine also. We ran it not only in Ukrainian, but we ran it in Russian so that perhaps the Russian troops that were there would get the gospel on their Facebook page. It's just a creative, Bible-based, Holy Spirit-led creativity in getting the gospel to people. Now I'm going to talk about money. Somebody said to me one time, every time I go to church, they talk about money. I said, you know what? Every time I go to the grocery store, they talk about money. 
Every time I go to the gas station, they talk about money. Every time I go to a restaurant, they talk about money. And they don't just talk about it, they tell me how much I gotta give them. I'm looking. I'm looking. I believe the Holy Spirit has led in this. I, I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't. I, was, I pastored for many years in Florida, started a church and pastored it for 20 years, the Lord blessed, in a wonderful way. I retired, moved to Georgia, be near our four kids, and the church got without a pastor. They asked me if I'd help them out, and they really couldn't afford a pastor. And I was the nearest no pastor they could find, so they let me pastor them for a while. But whenever the Lord opened up this thing, as it took happened over a few months, in September of last year, I resigned from that church to give what years or months or weeks or whatever time I have to raising money to get the gospel around the world. If this church, if this church here, in Bloomingdale, right? We're in Bloomingdale. Is that where we are? Bloomingdale uh, area of Kingsport, Tennessee. If you gave $100 a month, now some churches or individuals give more than that. A few give less than that, but we round it off to $100 a month. $100 a month. For $100 a month, we will come across in a year's time in a year's time, we'll come across a social media page of one million people. We will knock on one million doors on your behalf. If we have a hundred churches, individuals, businesses, Sunday school classes, if, I, if we have a hundred units of $100 a month. At that starting point, at that starting point of 100 hundreds, we will come across, in a year's time, we'll come across the social media page of 100 million people. The frightening thing is, and the sobering thing is, you got to do that 10 years to reach the first billion. But I must tell you, I don't know, in my experience, I do not know a better bang for your bucks. Now, we're not the only thing. We're not replacing anything. We're just something, simply another tool in the tool chest of fulfilling the Great Commission. Now, that we're totally dependent upon the Holy Spirit. Having the message is one thing, and the message is vitally important. You know that. But all is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down. The Holy Spirit is the one that does the convicting. The Holy Spirit is the one that does the saving. We cannot do the Holy Spirit's job. What we're trying to do is our job of getting the message out, available, and giving an opportunity. I'd like for you to pick up some of the some of the flyers of information. They're out of date numbers wise, but it will let you know what's going on. I would also like you to pray. This is a prayer card for me and my wife. My ministry is called the Gospel Initiative, and that is a 501c3 that uh, is established to take care of my expenses, to travel and do what I'm doing this weekend and some things that are necessitated because of my age. I can't, I, there was a time, some of you understand this, there was a time you give me a bag of sunflower seeds and a Mountain Dew and I'll drive all night long. But I can't do that anymore. <laughs> and so on you know, a long drive, like last Sunday, last Sunday I preached in Murphy, North Carolina. Wednesday night I preached in Miami, Florida. And here I am here this Sunday. I can't do that without stopping along the way and take a break. I can't make those long drives without a break. And so people support my ministry in that way uh, and enables me to do that. Because Brother Garraway, who's the voice and the 
the, the preacher on the film, Brother Garraway, nor I. There's only two of us. And you're talking about millions of people, but there's only two of us, and neither of us take any expense money from the gospel film or any salary from the gospel film. We take zero out of that. Now, of course, we do have to pay sometimes for translations being done. We have to pay sometimes for studio time to record some things. We have to pay for some things, especially most of the languages are done in closed caption. There's pluses and minuses to that. Many people in other countries like the closed caption because they see their language and read their language and they hear the English and they like to work on their English. That's strange to us, but they, that, that is true. But we do some voiceover to whenever Spanish-speaking people hear it, they hear it in Spanish, matching his words as much as possible. We're working on that in French. We're working on it in Mongolian. We have it also in sign language. It's also done in sign language. Uh, we have it, of course, I mentioned in Farsi. Mm, some other languages in voiceover. It's hard to keep up with because things are happening all the time. And so I would like you to take a prayer card to remember to pray for us. And these, there's a bunch of these out there. These are witnessing cards. These are witnessing cards. I have never had anyone turn this down. There was kind of a rugged looking fellow with me in the elevator last night as I went up to my room at the hotel. And uh, I went up to my room and he started to get off. I said, hey, he said something about have a good evening or something like that. I said, hey, let me give you something that'll help you have a good evening. I said, put your phone on that. Put your phone on that, scan it, and watch that 15-minute video. I think you'll like it. He reached for his phone. He said, you want me to give it back to you? I said, no, no, no. Keep it, scan it, keep it, give it to someone else. Give it to someone else. You can just pass these out like it would a gospel track. It's a 21st century gospel track. Now, some of us, some of you or us, we're Q-tips, you know? We have the white ends up here, okay? And we don't know about all that. We don't know about all that. And if you don't know how to work that, as I was talking to you a while ago, if you don't know how to work that, ask a grandkid. Your grandkids know how to work that. They know how to make that happen. And so you can take as many of these as you'd like. We've got these all over the country. We do not do much in the United States simply because churches are using these all over the country. The film is embedded on their website. Uh, it's just there's a lot of creative things being done by churches in the States with the gospel film, much of which we don't even know what's going on. They just, you know, take that and use it. People print this on their bulletins. They print it on their tracks. They print it on gifts that they give away. They print it on all kinds of stuff. And that's okay. That's fine. Uh, we're for that happening. We're not trying to keep the gospel from getting out. So those three things are out there. I'd like you to get those three things, especially a handful of these. And uh I wonder, do you have a question? Does anybody have a question? Can we take some questions? Any question? Anybody have a question about what we do, how we do, or why we do, or anything like that? Anybody have a question? You're going to have to help me. How long have you had it live? How many months has this been? Has this been, have we been doing this? Basically 14 months. Fourteen months, yeah. Uh, March. Really, I've had my first meeting to try to get support to put it and buy ads in uh, March of last year. March of last year. Anything else? Feel free. Anything at all? How can you talk about people going to hell and still be on Facebook? I have people ask me that all the time. I don't know. I don't know. I know that Facebook likes the production quality. It's a quality of production. 
And whenever they have a, I want to say this in the right way, whenever they have a quality production of something even that they don't like, but it gives balance to their business, it gives balance to their business, okay, then they like that. They like that. Uh, number two, I don't know. I do not know who handles our account. We don't know those people. But before we ever started buying ads, it was approved. It had to be approved by Facebook. But God has given us somewhere an open door and somebody it may not be a believer, I don't know, but they have a sympathy for what we're doing. And God opened the door. And you know as well as I do, God says, if he opens the door, no man can close it. No man can close it. And I don't know how long it will remain open. I don't know how long the Lord will allow it to remain open. But I just promise you this, we're running as hard as we can go to get it as far as we can get it, as quickly as we can. And I talked to my wife, and I said, Honey, I don't know. I know that realistically, you know this is going to wear me out quicker. Doing what I'm doing is going to wear me out quicker. But it's worth it. It's worth it. And I said, If it's okay with you, I'm just going to give myself to it and to doing this to try to put something in place to reach a hundred million people a year with the gospel. We're also, this is brand new, but I'll say just a word, and I know I'm two minutes past seven o'clock. I understand that. I see that big clock back there. I love that clock. I'm going to carry that with me everywhere I go. I'm going to get me one of those. Uh, there are 195 countries in the world. I'm putting together an organized plan till we can not just say reach the world, but an organized plan together to methodically get the gospel into all 195 countries of the world. And so pray for us. If the Lord would lead you, I, uh, I promise you we would use any support that you give to us, any prayer, financial support, we'd use it to the glory of God. And if you have any questions after service, I'll be out at the table out there. Pick up these things that I've shown to you. Love to have you take them. Stories, stories. Over Christmas, a lady wrote to us, and said, I had a sister that came to visit over Christmas. We got together as a family. We've been praying for my sister for years. I asked her if she would sit down, take 15 minutes, and watch a video with me. She watched the gospel film and trusted Christ as her Savior. Fantastic, just fantastic. Wonderful story, wonderful witnessing tool. And if you learn how to work it, it takes a little effort, but if you learn how to work it, you can get up the other languages and you can witness to somebody that you don't even know their language. You can tell them how to be saved. Pastor, I'll quit. Thank you so much, Brother John. I appreciate you coming our way. 81 years old. He travels about 40 weeks out of the year. 80. 80. Oh, I'm sorry. I gave you one extra year there. Keep the miles down on Brother John. If we can have our men come this way, we're going to take a love offering. And Brother Bailey, if you can make your way back up here. If not, I'd have to hum loudly while they pass the offering plates. Um, but we want to take care of Brother John and his expenses here as he traveled our way and was with us all day, kind enough to give us all day today. And uh, what a unique opportunity in the day we live in to have the gospel advanced, uh, to see souls saved, to have fruit for the labor even this afternoon at lunch. He shared so many stories of what God has done.
done and is doing uh, through this unique opportunity. And even in today's time, so many people have smartphones and telephones. You can take those cards and uh, use them every day, wherever you go. If you're at Pals or at McDonald's and at the workplace, many people know what that QR code is, and we can see the gospel uh, move forward. Let's pray for this uh, love offering here tonight. Lord, we thank you for the day. Thank you for those that are so faithful to be in your house. And God, we're reminded of the need of souls we're reminded of the need for us to be laborers. Lord, we think of this tool, this gospel film project, and we pray that you give great fruit for the labor in the days to come. God, we pray for Brother John as he's come our way. We pray that you'd continue to keep him safe. Lord, continue his burden to see souls saved. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. much Bailey for playing today we're continuing to pray for Miss Kim we'll pray and be dismissed and be on our way and the audio on that video is much much better we had a little problem here with our projector and we actually laid a microphone on my computer and so if you thought man it was the audio wasn't as crisp as I thought it could have been or should have been it probably is if you go home and pull it up or you watch it on your own uh, YouTube there on your telephone it is an excellent, excellent tool, excellent video. But thank you, Brother John, for coming our way. Thank you for being faithful. Wednesday night, a Bible study, and we're going to take a little um, uh, hiatus from Moses, and we're going to talk about Elijah. And I was, had the opportunity to preach at Cedarview Christian School's commencement on Friday night. I got to study about Elijah, and we're going to talk a little bit about Elijah. How many of you have ever been discouraged? You've ever been defeated? You've ever been depressed? You've ever been frustrated? Uh, you're in good company because Elijah was. And we're going to look Wednesday night, 1 Kings chapter 18, and see what God taught him in those days, uh, what God taught Jonah at Nineveh, and what God taught these men that faced great uh, frustration and great disappointment. Uh, yet in it, the Lord helped them. We're going to have some Bible truth there. We'll pray and be dismissed. Lord, we thank you for the day. Well, thank you for those that are so faithful to be in your house. And God, tonight we're reminded of the need to be a soul winner, Lord, the souls for which you've died. And God, we pray for this gospel film project, this tool, this opportunity. Uh, God, we pray in the days to come, you would give great fruit for the labor and effort there. Help us to uh, get behind this, to pray for those that will labor. Lord, help us to use these cards that here in our own community, we could see souls saved and lives changed. God, we pray as we go our separate ways today that you would keep us safe, give us a wonderful week. Lord, pray for those that could not be here today with health concerns and issues that you would strengthen their body. Help us to love you and to love others. In Jesus' name, amen.